There is no doubt in my mind that at some point Mike Bickle will get himself back into ministry. Hey, by the time some of you are watching this, maybe he already has. I know that's hard to believe based off everything that we have found out about not just what he did at IHOP KC, but even long before that, you know, when he was just starting out as a youth pastor. This man has been a liar, manipulator, a great deceiver. There's so many other things that you could call him. But it's important that we continue to talk about this because there are still so many who are blind to who this man really is. Look, the deception of some of these church leaders is very strong. It takes some people decades upon decades to realize it. We know that already with the various Jane Doe's that have come out and shared their story. Some have taken them over 30 years to do it. So we want more to wake up because even those Jane Doe's have said that, you know, they're thankful for their family, for their friends that spoke with them, that really tried to, you know, show them who Mike Bickle was and who, you know, the leaders at IHOP KC were. So we're, we're going to talk about this here because you got Mike Bickle giving <laughs> advice on what to do when one of your favorite church leaders falls into sin. Welcome, everybody, to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you, as always, we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, yeah, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, for those interested, you want to know my story about how I went blind, how I operate my entire ministry without being able to see, I made a video that explains it all. A link to that is it included is included in the description section of all my videos. Also, if God puts it on your heart to do so, Consider making a generous donation to support my ministry. A few different ways you can do that. One, hit the super thanks button on the YT video here. Make a contribution that way. Or join my Patreon for as little as five bucks a month. Patreon.com slash news. Link in the description. Joining the Patreon, you get all the videos before they ever hit my main YT platform. Also with that, you get some exclusive links to these topics that we discuss. Some that I include on Patreon for obvious reasons. But while you're there, you can comment censorship free on all videos and even send me DMs. So check it out again. It's patreon.com slash news. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, you know, when you get Bickle, you know, having these interviews and he's speaking about all these various issues that he himself is so guilty of. I mean, you just, you can't help but shake your head. Just you know, laugh. I mean, you're, you're disgusted. You're not laughing because it's funny. You're, you're laughing because it's actually so sad. But look, here we go again. We have Mike Bickle, who was discussing what believers should do when some of their favorite Christian leaders, some of their favorite church leaders from, you know, big ministries fall into grievous sin. Now, this interview was conducted by none other than Jono Hall. Now, Jono, of course, has been uh, recently working with the Advocate Group, and, you know, he helped to produce those videos that the Advocate Group put out back in December of 2023. But uh, for this particular clip here, this was an interview that was done a while back, uh, and Jono and, and was having this with Mike, and they're talking about, you know, and again, to, to look back at this and say, you know, Mike Bickle would be the last person, knowing what we know now, that you would ever want to ask this question to. But, you know, of course, this was before all the allegations really, you know, came out and, you know, people were still enamored with this guy for the most part. But he asked this question, you know, what should, you know, Christians do when their favorite leaders fall into grievous sin? And Mike Bickle is talking about how, well, you know, you never want to look at the man as the one to put all your faith and trust in. You, you want to look to Jesus. I mean, you can admire you can respect who they are and, you know, maybe what they've done for you in your own daily walk with the Lord. But look, you can't put this leader on a pedestal. You, you just can't do that. And you need to learn to have a soft approach, a, you know, a, a soft love for that leader, but not so much to the point that when that leader falls, then you fall with them. You know, you, you get out of the faith, you, you run away, you're hurt, you know, you've experienced trauma, whatever it may be. And as I'm listening to this, and by the way, I will have the link in the description section here. You can check it out for yourself. As I'm listening to this, this man knew that he was exactly one of those leaders, that he was a false leader. Because hearing him speak about these things, he knew people were going to look at him and say, oh my, he's so right. 
You know, there are a lot of fallen church leaders out there, but of course Mike Bickle is not one of those. Not Mike, come on. Not our beloved role model at IHOP KC. This guy, man, he's got the answers to all the questions. What sound advice? And you know what? Mike Bickle was right in what he was saying, except the fact that he didn't live anything that he was saying. And I say this all the time, you know, when we discuss this Bickle stuff, you know, a lot of the times he was actually saying some truth. He didn't believe any of it, but he was actually saying truth. You know why? Because that's how a wolf operates. Their goal is to get you to fully believe that they are something they are not. And Mike Bickle made a career of it for decades talking about, I mean, I've talked in the past about clips of him that have surfaced him talking about how we need to respect women, not treat them inappropriately. This coming from the guy that was actually doing those things behind the scenes with multiple women. And now here he is talking about not to put all your trust in these leaders because yeah, they could fall and you could go down too. And he was talking too about how, you know, the question was asked, you know, why are so many ministry leaders falling now. And, and he said it has a lot to do with, the, well, there's just so many more Christians now. There's so, there's so many more Christians that are falling. There's so many more churches. There's so many more ministries. So, you know, the ability for temptation and all these things to creep in, it's, it's a lot higher. And so you, you have to look at that. And, you know, when I heard him speak, I, I did not catch him saying anything about repentance. That was something that I noticed at not at any point, And I may have missed it, but not at any point in this clip, did I hear Mike mention how you should encourage those leaders who you're so in love with to actually repent of that grievous sin. Yeah. He said a lot about how you shouldn't put all your faith and trust in them, which is true, but he didn't mention, you know, being anything about purity uh, and standards and repentance, all of that was left out. And conveniently i may say because, well, we know that Mike Bickle was not somebody who operated in repentance himself. So why would he communicate that message to his followers? It's one thing to say, yeah, don't put your faith and trust in a leader 100%. Have a soft approach to that. But, you know, talking about repentance and all these things, that's a completely different story because it's not a man that even still to this day has repented for what he has done as more and more allegations continue to surface. It's truly unbelievable. But again, I believe it is very important to discuss these things. And as Elizabeth Herter said, uh, who is a former IHOP KC leader, and she gave a great interview, uh, it was not long ago, she talked about, you know, Mike Bickle's strategy is to wear out the advocate group. They're, she said that his hope is that they'll all turn on each other. And I thought about that, and it's funny because we know that the devil's strategy is to do what? To wear out the saints. Mike Bickle is, as his own father, Satan himself, using a similar strategy. So Elizabeth Herter told Christians to increase and keep up the pressure campaign. Not to, you know, ruin Mike Bickle's life or anything. I mean, look, he's, got, he's already done it himself. But to continue to keep this topic alive because it's going to help more people wake up to who Bickle is, who these leaders at IHOP KC are. Because there are still so many that are currently working there that are buying into the narrative that IHOP KC wants them. Is that, you know, that all this stuff that, you know, people like me and you and everybody else, we're all just out to get them and we're wrong and this and that. So make no mistake about it. I mean, there hasn't really been any true change at IHOP KC. They're still peddling around their narrative uh, that, you know, this stuff is all a lie. It's just vicious rumors and all these other things. So, yeah, don't buy into it. But again, I will have the clip in the description. I welcome your thoughts. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, let's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. What this is is an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing here in the church and exposing the false prophets, we're trying to win people to, for Christ because we are in the last days. He's coming soon. And people are looking for answers really in all the wrong places. So for anybody watching right now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing that you want to do right off the top, acknowledge that you are a sinner. 
That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. As he died and rose again for you and me, he paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and then jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. And the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Don't forget the links to donate to the ministry are there as well. Join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash news, or hit the super thanks button on the YT video here to make a contribution that way. It's all a great blessing. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.